Welcome to the 76 Capital Leadership Series. My name is Wayne Kimmel, and I'm your host and managing partner of 76 Capital, the sports tech venture capital fund. Today, we have a great guest just in time for the Stanley Cup playoffs of the NHL. We have six-time Stanley Cup champion and NHL Hall of Famer, Mark Messier. On this show, I interview top sports entrepreneurs, athletes, and executives who are shaping and many times changing the sports industry. I want to give a quick shout out to my producer, Ty, who's back at the stations, pressing all the right buttons and making it all happen. You know, you could follow me on, so on social media, especially on Twitter, at Wayne Kimmel, and definitely follow 76 Capital across all social media outlets. And remember, if you're an entrepreneur or you're trying to build a company in the sports industry or trying to do the next, next thing across sports betting, esports, sports media, or the sports tech industries, reach out to us. We would love to hear from you. So let's get to it. Today's guest is Mark Messier. As I said, he's an NHL Hall of Famer. He's a six-time Stanley Cup champion, and he's the brand captain for Akiso Water. Let's welcome Mark. Mark, welcome to the 76 Capital Leadership Series. This is, <laughs> this is so exciting to have Mark Messier on our 76 Capital Leadership Series. Mark, welcome to the show. Great to be on with you. I love the brand captain. That's a first. <laughs> well, we're excited to have you on. I mean, NXT Water, and it, you're involved with them, and you're their partner and brand captain. And I can't get wait to hear all the things that you're doing with them. And you know, and and that's that's just such an exciting thing that you're moving, doing some interesting things in the entrepreneurial world. But one of the things that we do on our 76 Capital Leadership Series is we always like to talk with, as we said earlier, the entrepreneurs, the executives, the athletes who are truly doing something next in the sports industry. Um, but we always wanna hear the backstory. And certainly you have an incredible backstory as a Hockey Hall of Famer and all the incredible things you did, but you know, maybe share with our audience where you grew up and was hockey always part of your life? Yeah, well, thank you for that introduction. Uh, yeah, I grew up in Edmonton, Alberta, Western uh, uh, Canada, um, small town, um, prairie town. Uh, hockey was huge, obviously, uh, as you can imagine, across all of Canada. But uh, certainly in a in a small town like Edmonton, uh, we used to watch the Montreal Canadiens and Toronto Maple Leafs, the original six back in the uh, back in the day before the expansion. But uh, so, you know, hockey was a big part of our lives. My dad was a player. Uh, we had uh, moved to Portland, Oregon for many years until uh, I was actually uh, six years old. He retired and moved back to Edmonton to be a uh, school teacher. And that's where I really kind of started my hockey uh, journey. And um, it was uh, it was amazing. Uh, you know, loved every minute of it. Had school friends that played. We all did it together. We skated outside on the outdoor rinks. And uh, it was just an amazing journey for me. Uh, I really loved the game, loved everything about it. Uh, wanted to emulate my dad, who was a hockey player, obviously. And, uh, and uh, you know, hockey was just a, such a big part of our culture. It, it was kind of a way of, uh, of life uh, where, where I grew up. Well, talk about your dad. I mean, what, what kind of influence did he have on, on your life and, and, and your career? Yeah, my dad was a big part of my career. Uh, obviously, he was a hockey player himself. So, you know, I had the luxury of, of having a father who had played the game, understood the game from many different perspectives. Um, you know, he coached. Uh, he's, you know, he was a school teacher. He got his master's degree in education. Um, so, uh, you know, well, well-rounded guy, worked hard, uh, had four kids uh, in five years at uh, 21, my mom was married uh, at 17, so four kids in five years. So uh, he had the, you know three or four jobs going to school and raising four kids. Well, you, you know your siblings. Uh, what what was that like? I mean, you, uh, your, I know your brother. I believe your brother was a was a really good hockey player as well. You guys, what was it like? You know, all playing together. Yeah, well, my brother uh, was older than me, so uh, we we had the luxury of playing together one year uh, of uh, peewee hockey uh, when we first moved back. Uh, my sisters, uh, you know, were into athletics as well, so a lot of skiing, uh, um, you know, softball, uh, athletic family, um, but uh, always uh, enjoyed playing with my brother, uh, you know, with his friends and uh, playing up in, the, in, in an age bracket. Well, you know, you... You 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 um after you know after you know what year were, did you end up um, getting drafted into the NHL? So 
So I played uh, one year in the WH uh, or the Western, uh, sorry, the World Hockey Association uh, before they folded uh, back in 1978, 79. <clears throat> that league folded. I played five games for the Indianapolis Racers and fin then finished the season with another 48 games with the Cincinnati Stingers. Um, so that, that league folded that year. Uh, everybody went back into the draft, uh, all the young kids that were playing. Uh, four teams joined the NHL that year. Uh, the Quebec Nord Nordiques, Edmonton Oilers, Winnipeg Jets, and the Hartford Whalers. Um, so the team went from, uh, or league went from 16 teams to 21, and there was one other team. I can't uh, remember at this point. <laughs> it might have been Colorado or, I can't remember. But uh, so, yeah, so I, I, I got drafted in the third round in 1979 to the Edmonton Oilers and uh, started my career with Edmonton. And that must have been pretty incredible. I mean, you know, playing for, you know, your, your hometown team. Uh, what, what was that like? Yeah, it was exciting. Uh, you know, I know how ho big hockey was in Edmonton. Um, you know, um, we had uh, some really good uh, semi-pro teams uh, back in the day. Uh, the Edmonton Oil Kings were a junior team, which were, you know, super successful uh, uh, junior hockey franchise. A um, lot of passion for hockey. Uh, in Edmonton, we got the WHA team back in 1972 um, when Bobby Hull joined the, the league and put it on the map. Uh, Edmonton was really excited about that. But when, when Edmonton went into the NHL uh, as an expansion team, it was a dream come true for everybody in Edmonton. Nobody could believe that a small town like Edmonton was actually getting an NHL franchise. And to be a hometown boy and, and being drafted uh, to Edmonton was, uh, was, was just incredible. Who were some of your early teammates, at, you know, at Edmonton? Well, Wayne was there. Uh, the same came the same year. Kevin Lowe was our number one draft pick that year. Um, you know, Glenn Anderson, another Hall of Famer. Yuri Curry, Grant Fuhrer was our goalie. Uh, you know, I, I think we ended up having, you know, seven or nine Hall of Famers on the team. Eventually, Paul Coffey, uh, just an incredible uh, group of uh, players that uh, started the very at a very early age in Edmonton. I feel like I just saw Grant, but it was more like a year and a half ago in Las Vegas because because of everything with the pandemic. But he's um, he's a he's a good friend of Derek Stevens, who runs the Circa, the new Circa uh, Hotel uh, and Casino in Las Vegas. And he's always out there and they're they have a big contingent of of Canadians and hockey fans there. So he's always out there with uh, with, with with those guys. So I see him walking around there. Uh, what was it? He was was such a was such a special guy, an incredible goalie in his own right. Yeah, uh, uh, Graham was an amazing teammate, actually. Uh, uh, you know, incredibly athletic. Uh, never let much bother him. Um, uh, as a as a as a as a as a forward, as a teammate, uh, you always knew you're going to get your best out of uh, out of Grant. Uh, super competitive in practice and in the games. Um, you know, really was the backbone of our teams. Uh, we had an amazing goal, goaltending tandem with Andy Mook and Grant Fuhr. Um, and, uh, but Grant was a special player, you know, drafted, not many goalies are drafted in the first round. Like he was, uh, was really uh, projected to be a superstar in the league. And certainly he fulfilled that uh, promise <clears throat> uh, with a career that he had, but uh, easy going guy, great teammate, uh, never blamed anybody for any kind of goals that were ever scored against him. Super encouraging to the people and the players around him. And all he wanted to do was win. He didn't care how we won. All he wanted to do was win. And for a goalie, that's a special characteristic. Well, we're really excited to have Mark Messier on our 76 Capital Leadership Series. As everyone knows, Mark is a Hockey Hall of Famer. And he's also a partner and brand captain of Next Water, um, NXT Water. And I uh, want to just, um, you know, ask you also you know of course you, you mentioned Wayne um that's the the great Wayne Gretzky and the two of you you know really helped transform the whole game of hockey um you know you talk about Grant Fuhrer and the way he prepared and the way he was you know just such a a competitor um what what, what do you think were some of the incredible traits and and qualities that you and Wayne kind of had and and Grant and the rest of the in, incredible players that you had on that Edmonton Oilers team that made you guys when you would you win six Stanley Cups? I mean, that's that's unreal. Well, we won five Stanley Cups in Edmonton, um, but I think the thing that really stood out for us is that uh, you know we had a lot of passion for the game. We all worked super hard. Um, 
we like to, to play the game. Uh, we like to play for each other. Um, we became very good friends on and off the ice, which is which is really important. Um, we had a lot of respect for each other. Uh, there was no jealousy on the team whatsoever. Everybody was pulling for everybody to elevate the guy next to you. Um, we understood that the only way that we could become champions was to to, to play together, and um, and because of it, uh, the the Oilers became one of the greatest franchises in in history. And some was some of the great, well, the greatest team in the last hundred years. I think the 1995 uh, team was voted. So, um, you know, we're all really proud of what happened in Edmonton. Um, you know, we you know we we owe it to each other because I think everybody collectively was responsible for it because as great as Wayne was and 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 the things that he did for us. Uh, Everybody in sport needs uh, support around them, and uh, I think Wayne is would be the first to tell you he's super appreciative of the efforts that we all put in collectively to become a team and become the great team that we were. Well, I think it's it's an interesting you know thing that you're talking about about teamwork. I mean, teamwork in athletics is obviously incredibly important, but the same the same time. You know, at the same time, that's something that's incredibly important important in business and in startups and in building companies. And and you as a, as a partner and brand captain in NXT Water, I mean, team is everything. Um, is that one of the things that you personally look for when you decide to get involved with a, a startup company or a company where you're going to lend your name or as well as, you know, investing your capital? I mean, is that something that's important that, that you look at? Well, it is. It is for sure. I think, you know, the number one thing is people, you know, I thought I keep saying I thought I was in the hockey business for 25 or 26 years. But in reality, I was in the people business because you're always selling something uh, when you're when you're a hockey player as a leader of a team. You're always selling an idea, a vision, um, you know, a, 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 a way to get to uh, what you're trying to achieve, um, a roadmap, if you will. Um, so it's a people business first and foremost. So when I got involved in things outside the game, the first thing that I really did is kind of get to know the people and see if we had some some things in common, uh, some synergy. Um, you know, the things that I uh, find important is good character, good morals. From there, you can kind of move on to the product and what they're trying to sell and, and what the, the idea behind it is and what the vision is behind it. But for me, it's always important to be around good people and um, and uh, and I think you know when I when you talk about uh, Akiso with Next Water, I think you know I love natural products. Obviously, I was always one of those guys that was trying to figure out a way to be the best I could be um, from a training standpoint, from a tr- nutrition standpoint. Uh, I was very early on interested in Eastern philosophy with acupuncture and and things that weren't so mainstream back when I started back in the late 70s. Um, and so I think marrying those two kinds of uh, philosophies, both Western and Eastern philosophies of health and wellness and trying to figure out what works best for you, but not being blind or not being opposed to trying something new that might help you in your career be a better player or stay healthier or stay on the on the ice longer. Or, and um, so I was always curious about that. And of course, you know, with the emerging market of, C- of CBD and, and the cannabis plant and all the things that can help uh, uh, folks with inflammation and whatnot uh, without the narcotics in behind it. It was super interesting to me. And, uh, and that's how the whole conversation got started. Really interesting. I mean, hearing about how you look at opportunities and certainly how you ended up getting involved as a, a partner and brand captain at Next Water. I mean, were there times in your career where I'm sure there were lots of times when you kind of, you wake up in the morning and everything's, everything hurts and, you know, there's, end up with bumps and bruises and all sorts of things that you you know you think about and were there how did you take care of yourself in the past and and would have something like next water been been amazing for you to have had while you were playing i think it would have been unbelievable to have when i was uh, because one of the things that we know that's uh is happening with the CBD is this helping reduce inflammation. Inflammation is one of the biggest culprits we have for any kind of soreness or stiffness that we have, whether you're an athlete or not. So, you know, you know, I played, uh, you know, 26 years of professional hockey. And I can tell you from the time that we started training camp in 
you know, early first week of September to the time we finished sometime in May or June, if we were lucky enough to win a Stanley Cup, there wasn't a day that you weren't sore. I mean, it was just the way it is, whether it's a puck bruise or a uh, some kind of bruise or inflammation or whatever it was, uh, every day you wake up, uh, you know, having to get your body moving again. And and uh, eventually it, it happens. So, you know, being able to do that naturally was the biggest thing for me because I didn't want to get into the narcotics there that you can take in order to kind of relieve some of the pain symptoms, which we know can all lead down to a rabbit hole that's not hasn't been good for anybody. So, yeah, I, I think, uh, unfortunately, uh, I miss this train with the with a natural product like this but uh you know i'm glad to see that a lot of the states now federally is starting to get legalized and so we can start using some of these natural products that uh, can help uh and i keep getting back to not only athletes but for everybody in their everyday life well certainly you would have loved to have used a kiso right while you were playing i mean but is there as, as a as an interesting product but what were some of the things that you did use that you tried to was it just icing and and aspirin and things like that or what other things did you did you do yeah a lot of times you can do flushing uh, with cold and cold water um after games before games um you know a lot of times uh, after games uh, you know you get on a bike and you would ride just to flush the toxins out after a hard workout a lot of things that you can do in order to really stay ahead of it a lot of stretching uh, you know, warming up your body uh, before activities, uh, super important. So over time, you kind of get to know what your body can withstand and what it, what it likes, what it doesn't like. And, you know, I guess over 26 years, you really get to understand, you know, everything about your body. If you are, if you are curious, uh, you know, I was super curious because I wanted to perform at a high level for a long time. And as I got older, it got harder. Uh, I, I, I needed more rest. Uh, I couldn't work out as hard in between games. Uh, you know, I couldn't work out as hard after games in order to get the benefits of the rest between games. So, um, you know, it's all kind of a trial and error as you go along. I was a lot different player than I was when I was 19 or 18 when I, than I was when I was 43. So if you don't evolve with the game, not only from a technical standpoint, but the equipment changes and and all the things that uh, crept in, into our game, the nutrition, uh, you know, it, the game will, will leave you standing still. Uh, so, you know, I was forced to evolve as a player, not only on the ice, but off the ice. And, and uh, but the curiosity is what drove me there. And I think is one of the things that really sustained my career for, you know, 26 years. You mentioned, you know, riding a, a bike after the game. One of the things I, I find fascinating is when you go behind, you know, next to the locker rooms at, at all the NHL, you know, stadiums and, and where the, all the teams are, right? Next door to the locker room is this, it's almost like a spinning studio um, that where everyone's in there after the game. Is that something that, you know, in your 26 years of playing, is that something that happened at the end of your career? Or was that something that's always, always happened? Towards the end of the career, for sure. Yeah, I remember coming to New York and the year we won in 94, we had a, a Dr. Howie Wanger was with our team. He was an exerciseologist. Uh, he, he was the first guy to really start thinking about how to look at the schedule there and, and um, break it down into segments and look for areas of opportunity that the players could work out to keep their strength, but also to rest. So that work rest ratio was super important. I mean, if you think about an NHL schedule, you're playing four and a half games uh, a week for six months with travel across the country and whatnot. So it's a very grueling, hectic schedule. So being able to maintain your strength is critical. Practice to keep your cardio and then and, and to stay sharp and work on systems and all that, but also the travel to stay in peak shape. It's, it's, it really became a science. So I, I think, you know, the, for, for me, the science started in there, uh, you know, mid 80s when we started doing VO2 testing, uh, took it to another level in the 90s with the science behind it. And they realized there that uh, you, if you could work out after a game, you'd have much more time in order to uh, restore the energy in between games. So that became very popular, whether it was just a short 15 minute flush on the bike or an actual full on workout uh, where you could receive the benefits of the weight training, but also the rest in between games so you weren't fatigued for the game. So science really started coming into our game, I would say in the, uh, in the early 90s. Uh, to the point where we're really looking at the schedule of trying to find ways to uh, to maintain the strength better without fatigue and burnout. Well, we're here with NHL Hall of Famer uh, Mark Messier on our 76 Capital Leadership Series, as well as partner and brand captain of Next Water, uh, wearing that Next Water hat and, and, and shirt there. 
Um, <laughs> you know, so if you're if you're watching, if you're on a podcast right now, tune into our IGTV or YouTube TV, and you get to see the the brand logo that that Mark's wearing. Uh, but Mark, I mean, you know, you think about where would this product have fit into your regimen um, when you were playing, um, and now as well as, as as you know, just someone who likes to go out and and work out and you know, takes long walks or gets on their treadmill or elliptical or bike or something. And, you know, they're just, they want to just be able to feel good the next day. How would you, how do you use this product? Well, I think in the, you know, we're in, in the dressing rooms, obviously there's a nice workout areas there with refrigerators full of all different kinds of beverages, products that are hopefully are healthy and, and have a benefit. I think nowadays, uh, you know, or in the near future, we're going to see a key. So in those uh, refrigerators because, because of all the benefits. So. Um, I would have been a guy that would have taken advantage of a product like this, all natural, uh, no sugar, uh, helps reduce inflammation, helps you, uh, you know, calm you in the stress, uh, helps you sleep. Uh, there's many different ways that uh, I could have been using, a, uh, you know, the beverage like a Kiso or product like a Kiso. Um, and I, I think it's only a matter of time before you see it in the locker rooms of many different professional sports. Well, certainly. I mean, the, the the company that 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 created Akiso is Next Water. Uh, you're a partner there, a brand captain. How did you get connected to the company? Well, uh, through indirect friends of uh, of the mutual of Todd Wax, the, the uh, founder CEO. Um, we both had a mutual friend uh, that she told me about uh, Akiso Next Water. Sounded super interesting. I uh, got in conversation with Todd, who uh, is an excellent salesman. <laughs> so he convinced me about the product. We did um, a lot of uh, research on it, a lot of discussions. Uh, again, you know, getting to know Todd and the team and what they're up to, the structure, uh, their vision, their plans, everything that uh, they had, um, you know, in store. Uh, it's not easy to build a, a brand, uh, especially in this in a very competitive market like the water. But uh, we don't we don't consider ourselves in the wa- in a water market. Uh, we uh, consider ourselves in the performance drink market, uh, one that's super healthy with great benefits. So I think we're a little bit different in that area there that we can separate ourselves from uh, the competitors. So where can people find this product today? Well, if you go to kisowater.com, it's the easiest place to to find it. Uh, obviously on, online on our website, and it'll show you the distribution points around. But um, that that's probably the best way to go if anybody's super interested. Go to kisowater.com and uh, and um, it'll tell you um, all about the product. Uh, the interesting part that we have on each and every bottle is a QR code that you can scan on your phone, like you do on other uh, QR codes, and uh, it'll tell you exactly uh, where that uh, uh, bottle was made, uh, where the plant was derived from. Uh, it's just an incredible uh, way to c- uh, create comfort for the consumer to know what exactly what they're drinking and what's in the uh, what the ingredients in that uh, particular uh, bottle are. Well, Mark, as a hockey hall of famer and being a guest here on our Seven Seas Capital Leadership Series, I have to ask you about the the Messier Leadership Award uh, that I that I've learned about and and talk about how that got started and 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 who were some of the award winners over the years. Well, it's uh, super humbling, to, I have to say, to begin with, that to, to have an award named after me. Uh, I'm glad I'm still alive to be able to get to enjoy it and see the uh, recipients uh, earn earn the uh, the right to uh, for the award. Uh, it started out uh, many years ago, actually, when I was uh, retiring uh, from the game, and um, Bridgestone was creating a uh, a uh, an award about uh, uh, leadership uh, on and off the ice. Um, since then, it's morphed into more of a league award, which I'm very proud of. And, um, you know, we are all too quick to talk about the things that the players uh, are not doing and the mistakes that they're making. And those are the ones that get sensationalized. But we have so many great players in our game doing some ama- so many amazing things on and off the ice. And to, con- to continue to celebrate those players, uh, I think is, is really important not only for the game, but to inspire young boys and girls in order to achieve their dreams as well. So I think, uh, and then of course, uh, part of the uh, of my award, the Messier Leadership Award, is about how are you growing the game, which we all know is so so important for our game, and the inclusiveness of it and the diversity of our game. So 
you know, I'm really proud of what the uh, ward has uh, morphed into from the very onset into what it is today. And, um, and uh, it takes a while for, for these kinds of awards to gain traction, but I think the players and, uh, and the people in the game are starting to stand up and take notice that, uh, that uh, we're, we're celebrating the greatness of our game and the greatness of the people that play it. That's amazing. That's amazing. You know, one of the things that, you know, my, my viewers and listeners um, from New York would be very upset if I didn't talk to you about your, your time in New York as a Ranger and a Stanley Cup winner there. Um, you know, of your, um, you know, that, that must have been, must have been amazing being in New York, winning a cup there. Um, what was the, what was it like being there and, and kind of maybe the a difference between you know, playing in Edmonton and then coming to the kind of the bright lights of Manhattan? Yeah, you know, it was an amazing time uh, that, you know, that I spent 12 years in Edmonton, uh, lucky enough to win, uh, uh, be a part of uh, f- five Stanley Cup winning teams. Uh, you know, we went to, uh, we won five cups in seven years, six uh, finals in eight years. Uh, it was an amazing 10 year run um, of hockey at, at a super high level, super intense uh, um, environment with the passion that's in Edmonton. What I was really excited about coming to New York was, first of all, an original six team, the opportunity to play for a team that hadn't won a cup at the time in 51 years. But what I was really kind of most excited about was when I got here, how much passion it was for the Rangers and how exciting that was, because that's the kind of environment that I just come from. And I knew exactly how important playing in that kind of environment is to an athlete, is to a team to have that kind of uh, pressure uh on you not only from within but also from without with the fan base and all that and nobody know everybody knows about the passionate ranger fan base so i was really excited about that and you know not always easy uh you know the first year in new york we won the president's trophy got beaten the playoffs next year we didn't even make the playoffs so you know when i got to new york i really ran the gamut of uh going from the highest high to the lowest low and then all the way up to uh to uh, winning a Stanley Cup and being part of an amazing team that, uh, you know, for the first time in 50 year, 54 years was able to, you know, hoist the Stanley Cup on Madison Square Garden ice. So incredible, uh, incredible uh, experience. Uh, you know, we're still talking about it here. We are 26 or years later, uh, you know, get uh, conversations all the time, walking on the streets of New York to this day, uh, thanking me. Uh, and I said, don't thank me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, because it was a really a huge collaboration, uh, not only with the players, the organization, the coaches, managers, owners, but also from the fan base. They played a huge part of it. And um, and I think that connection, even when I was in Edmonton, understanding that connection between the team and the community was so important to winning and uh, being able to share it finally with the people of New York was unbelievable. You know, Mark, you know, you talk about teammates, um, the right kind of chemistry. Um, in today's world, you hear a lot about data, analytics, technology, next level type products um, like a Kiso. Um, what kind of impact has that had in the game of hockey today? Well, I think I think technology in general has had a huge impact. It's made our game better. Uh, you know, just from an equipment standpoint, uh, I remember playing in two or three overtimes in the middle of, uh, of, of May uh, in the Boston Garden or whatever, uh, you know, sweat, you know, just unbelievable humidity and the equipment wouldn't dry. I mean, in, you know, heavy and, you know, skates soggy and gloves and all that, uh, you know, the new equipment now, just for instance, uh, you know, you know, repels the water better, stays drier, lighter, um, you know, skates are, are made better. Um, you know, sticks are better. Everything's better from that regard. Coaching's better. Nutrition's better. Uh, weight training has completely evolved in the last uh, 30 years from when I first started back in the late 70s. Uh, everything of the, of the game from that regard is great. Analytics is great for the management, coaching staff to understand the trends better. I mean, uh, I guess it's just how you, how you use it all. Uh, but you know what the greatest part about our sport is? Is that with all that, Everything combined together and all this great technology and all the analytics and all the nutrition and all these great, beautiful, shiny new toys that we have, you still got to go stand in front of that if you want to score a goal. And the guy that's got you there, his job is to move you out of there. And when I and my job is to stay there. And so that clash of wills will never change. And it's who wants it most is going to end up winning. <laughs> 
That's so true. I mean, that's it's 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 one of the things that you know at our seven six capital leader um, leadership series, and as well as on our seven six capital athlete venture group. I hear, you know, our chairman is is Brian Westbrook, and Brian always talks about the persistence, right, and that and that and being able to just move forward. And there's really no tech, there's no analytics, there's no data that sort of makes you just get back up after you get knocked down, or just kind of push forward when you're when you when other people are telling you that it's you know, you have no chance or you're down a few goals in the third period or whatever it is. I mean, it's one of those things that I think that I'd love to hear your, your, your view on this. I mean, what that, what that really means and, you know, to what, and what it takes to truly be a champion. I mean, because I'm sure growing up the fact, first of all, the fact that you would be even be playing in as a professional, number one, people are like, come on, come on, Mark, seriously. Or secondly, you're going to win a Stanley Cup. You got to you got to be kidding me. This, that's never going to happen. I'm sure there were a lot of doubters over the years. Even your, you know, you mentioned your after winning five cups, you know, in 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 Edmonton and then going to New York and it not happening right away. It must have, people must have been like, you know, come on, you're washed up, man. It's not going to work. But but you kept it going. And and what what was it that allowed you to do that? Uh, well, I think you know uh, you learn a lot along the way. I think in all. Um, forms of life, uh, sports or business or arts or whatever, you learn a lot. Uh, you, you're around people that uh, you take uh, a lot of information from, uh, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Uh, I think you store the things that you really think are important, that are really great life lessons in, in your sports. Um, and I think that you also are uh, exposed to things that aren't so good, that don't work so good, that maybe perhaps you should look at it in a different way. Uh, but most importantly, I think uh, having an unwavering uh, belief in yourself, uh, no matter what. I think that is something that uh, is absolutely critical. Oftentimes, I hear athletes and people with really bad self-talk. Uh, um, you know, I, geez, I'm a bad player. I, I can't do this. Uh, you know, we'll never get this done. We're never going to win. Uh, you know, everything contrary to what you should be telling yourself. And so I think that alone is really something that uh, is so important for for any young athlete or anybody that's in kind of the uh, the world where they're trying to achieve something, it just have an unwavering uh, belief in yourself. Never, never surrender to the outside uh, rhetoric that's going on around you. And of course, you are going to fail. Of course, you got to get yourself back up. Of course, you're going to make a hundred mistakes along the way. Of course, uh, you know you're going to be embarrassed at times. And of course, all these bad things are going to happen. But every time that happens, there you got to keep going, pull, pulling forward there. And, um, you know, I was, you know, on the, on the wrong side of many games and on the right side of many games. You know, I played 26 years. Uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to win six Stanley Cups, which is considered a lot, but I only won 25% of the games that I, or the years that I played, I lost the other 75%. So am I a winner or am I a loser? You know, so it's a little bit of perspective is, is important there, but I, I keep getting back to, you can never waver from the belief they have in yourself there and good self-talk is critical. Well, certainly, Mark, we at 76 Capital look at you as a winner. I mean, six Stanley Cups, that's unbelievable. Congratulations on an incredible career. Uh, as we start to wrap up our 76 Capital Leadership Series with Hockey Hall of Famer Mark Messier and partner and brand captain in Next Water with their incredible product, Akiso. Um, Mark, I, I want to ask you one other thing that I, I've, I've noticed about you and, and, and the fact that you actually, like us at 76 Capital, care about the world want to make this world a better place, are extremely philanthropic, want to help others and, and, and lift up others to, to be very successful. How did you decide or how did, was that something that you, you, know, you kind of just had inside of you that your parents may have given you? Or was there someone that you played with over the years that really started to point you in the direction of like, like you know what, I actually can really make a difference and, and make this world a better place? Well, you know, I th again, I think it's just, uh, you know, how you evolve as a person and the people that you spend the time with, uh, the people that you choose to uh, uh, shoulder to shoulder with, um, you know what I mean? And, and I think that, you know, you get exposed to many different philosophies, many different ideas, many different uh, points of view. And uh, you really got to at some point try to start to kind of form what you f feel is right. I mean, I grew up in nature. I grew up... Uh, you know, in the mountains, in the on the oceans, uh, you know what I mean, uh, in the prairies, uh, hunting, fishing, 
um, and uh, skiing on the beautiful Rocky Mountains. I mean, so outdoors is always a big, uh, huge part of my our, my life and our family's life. Uh, you know, we used to have a little cabin up on Rhododendron on the base of Mount Hood that we had summer there and, you know, do the hikes up in the mountains and the, and the rivers and the zigzag river and, and whatnot. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, healthy living, healthy lifestyle, um, you know, um, elevating people around you, giving them opportunities, sharing the knowledge that you have, um, all I think is interconnected in some ways into, uh, into helping people achieve their goals. And, you know, you know, I was lucky enough to have great people around me for many years, uh, you know what I mean? That helped me kind of through navigate some, some rough waters at times. And, and so, you know, here I am with 26 years of experience of, uh, playing professional hockey with all the great people that had played with all the great lessons there. And, you know, paying that forward now is something that I feel really strongly about and any way that I can do that to, to elevate anybody, to help, uh, you know, uh, charities, to help, uh, institutions to help children uh, boys and girls to inspire them to be better to to think bigger to jump higher is uh, I think is uh, super important well as we wrap up here you know you played with the great Wayne Gretzky he is always used not only as a example in professional sports but also in business to when he talks kind of about always skate to where the puck is going to be um, that's always used as an example, you know, both in, in sports and in business. When you think about the future of where the puck will be in business, um, whether that's with with Nextwater and, and their product ISO or other you know, types of things you're involved with, what do you look at? What do you think is the next, next thing when it comes <laughs> to the sports industry? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, in, very, very great question. Uh, really good question. Uh, I think we're all looking for that. I think everybody's su super interested to see where it's all going to go. Um, you know, who would have thought that a little p p piece of digital art would have been so uh, valuable, uh, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, two years ago, who would ever have dreamt that would have been so interesting. Uh, and we can see where these NFTs are going now in our sport. Um, but it just shows you the passion that we have in, in our sport uh, in, in all across all the sports and major sports and and the art indus industry colliding and and uh, the um, you know the the emerging uh, digital uh, world that we're living in. So I think that's super interesting. Um, you know I think uh, technology will continue to be a part of our game. We'll know more, we'll learn more. Uh, you know, research and development into our into our equipment is always going to continue to grow. And, uh, you know, we got 32 teams now spread out pretty much across the country, which is amazing. Who would have thought that hockey would have been so, um, you know, uh, welcomed and received in the southern states. And now we got uh, players like Austin Matthew, who grew up in, uh, in Arizona, you know, one of the best young players in the league. So, uh, you know, when we say hockey's for everyone, we really mean it now. If you if you got a passion for it, uh, you want to try to play the game. You, you know, we're we're finding that uh, players are able to do that because of uh, of uh, you know the, not only the, the technology around it, but uh, also that uh, the the emerging uh, emergence of new ice sheets around the country and more and more and more. So um, tough question, but uh, you know, I just like the trajectory that we've seen over the last 10 years. Our game's in a great spot. We have a great, <coughs> you know, commissioner and uh, with Mr. Bettman has done an amazing job since he came in. Uh, I think his first, uh, first year uh, he, uh, he handed me the cup in New York in 1994 and he's had an amazing run, run ever since. So uh, uh, NHL is in a great healthy spot. Uh, the players are amazing. Every so much talent in the game. And I'm just looking forward to the next 10 years and seeing some great, great, great hockey. Well, I love that. And uh, thanks, Mark. Really appreciate having Hockey Hall of Famer Mark Messier as our guest on our 76 Capital Leadership Series. Um, we wish you a lot of luck uh, with all the things that you're doing, including with your partnership with Next Water and their brand, uh, Kiso. And I hope that um, it's, it's, a, it's a great success. Well, I have no doubt it's going to be a great success because uh, great success is usually going to follow uh, really hard work. So we're going to do that. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on. And remember, if you're an entrepreneur, an athlete, a student, or a business person who wants to work or start a company in the sports world, 
whether it's in the sports betting industry, the esports industry, the nutrition industry, the sports tech world, the sports media industry, come and talk to us at 76 Capital. We'd love to talk with you, learn from you. Maybe there'll be opportunities for us to work together and you just never know. So reach out to us at 76 Capital. We'd love to connect with you. And once again, I'm Wayne Kimmel. Thanks for tuning in for this edition of our 76 Capital Leadership Series. So get out there and go make it happen.